somebody lift your hands as we celebrate the greatness of our God. He's great and he's greatly to be praised. Our God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Come on, our God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Give strength where I've been weak. Forever he'll reign. Say, my God is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. My, God is awesome. my God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak. Where I've been weak. Forever he'll reign. Come on, if you believe it, lift your voice and say, awesome. Come on, if you know it's awesome, say, awesome. Come on and lift your voice. Awesome. 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 My God. My God awesome. Come on and testify. Awesome. awesome. If you believe it, say, awesome. Come on and say it. Think about it, Savior of the whole world, giver of salvation, by his stripes, I'm here, my God is awesome, today I am forgiven, his grace is why I'm living, somebody ought to praise his holy name, come on and testify, you know he's awesome, say it.
No matter what may come my way, thank you, Jesus. I feel it all in my spirit right now. I feel it. No matter what may come my way. No matter what may come my way. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what you're going through. His grace and mercy. Do it for him. He loves you.
sincerely apologize for the absence of Minister Green and we are unable to be here today. So I will present to you, or moderator, what is the other person, Deaconess Sharon Eilish, in the care of the Holy Ghost. Bless the name of Jesus. Worship the name of the Lord. Amen. Are we happy to be here this afternoon? We should be happy, and though it's a sad occasion, bless the name of Jesus, because we could be otherwise minded. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
God. Now we are always for our daughter to do the first lesson. And I'm followed by Jade, the Jade Pringles, after which a selection by turn very primary and infant department. Bless the name of the Lord. Now they will come at this time, please. Chapter 4, verse 14 to 18. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this, is, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. With them. With them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 18 and last. Wherefore, confer one, one another with these words. Thanks be to God. Bless the name of Jesus, Najee. Good morning, everyone. I'll be reading a poem about God saw you getting tired. God saw you getting tired, and a cure was not to be. So we put his arms around you and whispered, Come to me. With tearful eyes, we watched you and saw you pass away. And although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. A golden heart stopped beating, hard-working hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us that he only takes the best. Amen. 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 Parents of the Turner Primary and Infant Department, I would like to extend condolences to the Archer's family. Um, we know that this is a time where you are grieving, and I just want you to know that you are not alone. Just want to tell Nalia that we as a family, we are here for you, so you can always lean on us. Death may have robbed you of the physical person, but one thing death cannot rob you of is the memories. So I just want you to hold on to the memories and they will keep you. This journey for different persons might be long, but I can assure you that it does get easier. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there a praise in the house? Hallelujah. Is there a praise in the house?
tell every one of us, let us burn out of the song. Oh, what a weeping and wailing. Amen. 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 Tonight, God, we are weeping and wailing. That's the name of Jesus. Coming to us now with the David Archer, grandson, reading the second lesson. Bless the name of Jesus. Read it from verse 1 to 6. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering, and so be condemned in sin, the flesh, and in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live accordingly, according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Here in the reading, here in the reading of God's holy word.
So she asked to say a few words about her brother. So I, I hope I do justice to her words. Man that is born of a woman is of few days to live. My brother got more than a few days. He had a long life, more than was what allotted. Wilbert Lloyd Archer, better known as Uncle Preshi, Cat Goulson, was born to Jeremiah and Elmer Archer on December 14, 1936 in Tyndale, in the parish of St. Anne. Tyndale. Tyndale. Sorry, I've been away for too long. Tyndale. He was seven of nine children. He attended the best Jefferson Elementary School. On leaving school, he went to learn carpentry with his elder brother, Desmond. He was a builder, contractor in those days, and he could read blueprints. So he was the builder. He built all over. On returning back to Jefferson in 1958, there were houses that were built by him and his brothers. I was born in one of them. Even on throughout the days, and to know, you can examine the houses, the water tanks, the culverts, and I will assure you, you will not see, not even a crack in them. Uncle Preshi, as he was affectionately called, was like a father to his nieces and nephews. That's true. And even strangers that came by. There was a bar next door. Miss <laughs> Dello. So on Friday evenings after work, he would have his bath, went over and stood in front of his bar with, the, with his back against the light post. If any of the boys ever dared to enter through our gate, this fourth finger would just point in the direction and they would know just to divert back through the gate. He was the disciplinarian. They have to know themselves. Thank God, for him he helped to mold all the children that were in the house, top yard. He held us together and helped us pass through. The children were saying that they were glad to have him around, as there were no male in the house to hold them together after the, his other brothers migrated. When you visited him and asked him what happened, his answer would be, Me the on the gully side, or Me the on the tin side of the map train. That one I don't understand. Or he would say, Me a hold a wicket, but me not make no wrong. <laughs> he loved his liquor. Although he was rated the best truck driver, and he loved to hold his liquor. Sometimes we would wonder how he got home. When, he, when we asked him, his reply would, well, we didn't under the weather. Our mother, Aunt Moore, would always be praying for him and call his name, asking God to change him. <laughs> to everything, there is a season and time. For everything, there is a purpose under the sun. Heaven's time, there is a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to reap. The question is asked, if a man die, shall he live again? Let's remember, we came in this world naked and nothing. We'll carry out only if the soul is okay with his neighbor. Rest in peace, my brother. Rest in peace, Uncle Bush. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We can now let me have him, the officer in him. Bless the name of Jesus. I must have the Savior with me. 
for I fear not to overdose. I have a fear in his presence, Mary, and his arms are long to the Lord. I must have
call me fear, not walk alone. Coming to us now, will be Sister Walters from the Full Truth Church, which I like them. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, everybody. Glory to God. Oh, we're going to do this one, but I want to just clap and sing with me this morning. I know it's a sad day, but you know it's a black day too. Because we're still alive and we're sending him home to glory. So today we will praise God to sing and clap with me. A country where no twilight shadows deepen. All the days days where life shall never be.
and in a very special way. So, Auntie Sonia. Indeed, they have played a major role in our lives, man. And since then, our lives have never been the same. Later on, I will tabulate the many ways in which not only Uncle Speshi, but the Archer's family have blessed our lives in a very special way. I want to say this, that um, at a certain time in the tribute, I intend to share with you a message that Uncle Speshi would have you to listen to. And at the same time, I'll share with you a song in which I think speaks to the kind of person Uncle Speshi was. Special. Right. Right. Special. Right. I'm special. Right. I can't be special. That's how I'm always going. I want to say this though that during this illness, I have observed a certain care being administered to the special. And I can't overlook that. The care received will remind me of the covenant that as my persons we made for better for worse or richer for poorer in sickness and in health you know and as as I observe the last two occasions that last two occasions that I've had the opportunity to visit with when we had the grave digging for Uncle Roy I stopped by and trust me, if you were not told that she was sick, you would know. Well put together. And so I salute you and the story. And the other caregivers who work closely with you in caring for him. That was a sad occasion. The other occasion that I had the opportunity to visit with was the actual burial of the remain of Uncle Roy. And I stopped by. We exchanged a few words. And in that moment, I felt here was a man who had made a commitment. Here is a man who recognized the importance of having an intimate relationship with God. The third occasion was when we celebrate, celebrated a special day for a special lady, one who on that occasion I called her, she is royal, as expressed by Taurus Riley. She isn't here, she was the team. And by. And he was very much present to join in the celebration of Aunt Vi. And how it was a glorious occasion that we could meet together like that and to celebrate life. Today, I truly want to lift up a few things about this brother, this friend, this family member, because I could safely say that in the Arjas family, I have been engrafted as a family member and every member that I've met would help me to feel that way. Uncle Speshi, 
special. Uncle special was special. Uncle special. Uncle special. Uncle special was special. As one who was special, I look at him from not from a rich, not from a religious perspective, but as a spiritual man. As one who was spiritual, I see him displaying the gift of hospitality. Because when I sojourned to the parish, his home was one that I was welcome to enter. And every time that I visited, I had the opportunity to visit. I would not go empty handed. Be it what rose pork, cake, or sometimes I will have a drink with it. Who's a pastor mustn't drink? Wine is a maca, strong drink is raging, but whosoever deceived by it is not wise. So I would sit down and would have a drink. Mr. Victor Williams Craig, followed by Mr. Hart 
Ryan otherwise struggle. Other officials being in his sons, family members and friends, good afternoon to you all. My name is Yvette McFarlane, otherwise called Vern, which is my middle name. And with me is my brother Dudley, otherwise known as Ian. And we both will be doing tributes on behalf of the nieces and nephew of our beloved uncle. So I will start with my personal attributes. Uncle Preshi. Um, a man of very few words, but loved and cared deeply. And I can recall in 1994 when Mama took ill, Uncle Preshi would take that trip to Kingston. Every night, every other night, but He's not the, the one that is going to come and get physical. But he's not moving from that doorway. But he must be coming up to the mama. Right? And that is my uncle. As a child, I remember when I was going up to Top Yard, because that's where we used to go over ramp back in the days. And that great Austin Cambridge car was one of the items spot them. I can still smell the leather that red, rich leather seat where we used to play hide and seek one of the spots. Corey and Janet and all of us used to hide all over the yard. In the truck box, in the car, on the cellar, back a grave, anywhere. So his car was one of our hiding spots. And on a more personal note, when I moved to Portmore in 2002, Uncle Freshie, Uncle Roy, Uncle Cecil, and Uncle Neville, they came and built my fence. All I had to do was to get the building material. Not a cent was paid. Such is the measure of a man. Right? And you would have heard from Reverend with his tribute, he has left many marks in terms of building and construction throughout the community, churches, funerals, caskets, I can recall. I can almost remember from four my days. You know, Angie downstairs before the house was fully constructed. Once somebody died in the community, Kat and my cousin Finko, those are the specialists and most of when you come on to get in cast it. So the Patek and from Mica days and then they evolved to the purple velvet fabric for finishing. And they used to use the banana trash now to do the line, you know, until they got more sophisticated with the sharing from the cedar wood. And then they evolved to the polish furnishings and um, the, the cedar was left natural in its natural state, you know. So I know that he has made many contributions to many families in terms of building caskets and physically doing the grave. So he has left an indelible mark there. Many, many memories, but I'll allow Ian to speak on behalf of the other cousins. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, friends, members of the platform. I stand so glad to see you. Every now and again, I come in. <laughs> I wish to say that there are certain people who appear in this world once in a lifetime. And Uncle Crush was one of them. He was a mix of everything. He was a disciplinarian, a provider, a joker for those of us who know him. Despite his sometimes serious demeanor, he was an advisor. He was a bad man also. If I say bad man, we know what a bad man is. When I'm watching that, yes. And among other things, he was a straight shooter. On the pressure, no means anything to tell you. So you're straight and you take it as it is. So we're not here to paint a picture of probably some saintly character, really, if you want to say that. But we. Uncle Fresh was a character in him. And in putting together this tribute and behalf of all of us nieces and nephews, I went along and I called up everybody and said, Give me a story on Uncle Fresh. I think the stories are too many and time would allow us to put some of them. But we more or less captured what we think we could capture. 
I will start by saying, up to the days when he could still relate to you seriously, he said something, and I will say it also. He said two things he enjoyed in life. Women and rum. I will speak much on the but I will talk about rum. Yes. Uncle Percy loved his drink. He always talked about bending his elbow. I always did speak. And we know what that meant. Yes. The talk about the Stella Bar next door, you know, my children. That bar was Uncle Fresh's favorite place once he was home. He had a special stool there, a special glass. And the Stella had to make sure nobody else used those items. Yes. Uncle Fresh also was known all over Jamaica because as a trucker, he would frequent many places to deliver goods, pick up goods, and go to the truck even as a hearse. And also, he would make stops also to have a little drink every now and again. So he was well known. And like Aunt Bryce Shiva said, Aunt Moore always prayed for him. But that is good. He would always turn up and time and at home. So I would say he had a love of you that this still spirit. <laughs> Not only was Uncle Pressure a drinks man, but he was also a food man. And for those of you who do not know him, or know of this family on the other side, food is something that kept us together and will continue to keep us together because whenever we need, we always have food to share. We always have food to share. Uncle Pressure loved pork. And in the early days, it was hard pork. And like my elder cousin Georgia and Jerry, they can tell you, he had a barrel. And my kids here can attest to that too. That he always kept stuck with corn pork. And whenever it was getting to a certain level, it had really stuck because a pig had to be killed. And the thing about our family, when an animal is slaughtered, it was not sold wholesale. A part of it would have to be stayed in the house to support the house. That's it, always. That's the policy. So from corn pork, he moved the latter days to pot roasted pork, as Robert Brissett said. And I don't think anybody could be better than Uncle Freshie. But I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm taught him how to roast pork. Because in the early days, Uncle was the head chef for almost everybody. Our brothers going out to work and all the children. So think about the days when Top Yard was the yard where that is where all of us basically head to. And Uncle I can tell you, 20 at plates and table, children coming to eat. And nobody gets shot food. As when food share, food share for everybody. And not only members of the family, but people from in the community or people passing by would get. I remember one time I went out to a function, and it's a paid function. And the security officer was a policeman doing that to moonlighting. And I struck up a conversation with him. And he told me he knows Uncle Pressure. And from we started talking, he said, No, man, no way. Upon the pressure on the right? And then something come to me, not this. Because when he left training school, they put him to kill station. And he found his way up there. So, Top Yard, that's like the place to be. Central. In those days, it was no lot of times most of us have moved on. That Top Yard is not there, but it's still a meeting place and a greeting place. You can't talk about the pressure without talking about trucking. In the early days, when banana was king and sugar was a part of the package also. So, Top Yard was a university because it was there. My uncles, Persian, Norway, Roy, Desmond, and all of them owned their skills as plumbers, masons, carpenters, farmers, and mechanics. This was a fixed yard for those bicycles and cars and trucks and also. And in the trucking business back in the early days, it was a BMT truck they started with. And Aunt Bright could tell you that when they came out of it, they were, they were coming from a hurry field because everybody was greasy. <laughs> but things got updated when Uncle Noel went on farm work, gathered some funds, and they came back and they bought a Puma truck. And this is the truck now I'm a big cousin, can tell you, because I am not a bit young to tell you that. But you could hear this truck from Salisbury coming up the top yard. I can hear it from, from when it changed here. Somebody is saying there? A reload. They call it the whistling truck. I don't want to do nothing about the sound, but I think I'm going to be the one standing. Supreme Knight Harry here. 
Yes. It's that. So, all of us know that Uncle Pershing was a truck man. And this truck now was more than just a regular truck, you know. Because this truck is a hurt sometimes. It carried people for different occasions. In those days, here, go trips, etc. All right. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there's only one thing also, you know, that remember, you know, when you hear this truck coming, you know, everybody in the yard will get themselves in order because when Uncle Pershing comes, no problem to be in the yard. So, like I said, even Cousin Basil, one of our relatives, told me that in 1965, when he went to Nakalva boarding school, Uncle Pershing took him down there, free. So it was like a big excursion. And he said he felt like a king. Everybody said, man, want to put a thing to carry you cut on your man? <laughs> so, that was the money to the home pressure. Yes. But the truck was the truck was special, man. The truck was special. As Pastor said, when it was passing through White Island, every top home pressure stopped, somebody come out, school children he never left them. They always said, come on, come, 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 come. So that's that that was up, man. And we reference to talk about the kindness. We all know what the precious kindness. And I think probably, I don't know. Sometimes I want to kind to the fool. I can't tell my father to tell my mother sometimes. How she kind to the fool. But it, it's cycle. It does, that's, that's how we are. We try our best to be. Mm -hmm. The only thing about it, you know, to earn a precious favor and kindness, you have, you have to work for it. You have to earn it. Because I can tell you, it did not like smellers, it did not like thieves, it did not like sweet talkers. He liked people to start straight. And so, laziness also. And little people. Yes. So, children, talk to you, I can tell you about a person is disciplinarian. And he talk about the warm stick. It's coming. And later, he talk about the rosewood. Well, I don't know who got the rosewood, but then anyway, it was them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there were occasions also, he got a little ballistic where he had a revolver and he would exercise his with a revolver. I won't say anything further than that. Also, Uncle Pershy was a man who used choice words in the um, Jamaican fabric goes, yes, in things and paddles. Yeah, multi-syllable yeah. words. And I was talking to Roddy at the end. He said, I fly down in a rock of a called Lucky. said, when Uncle Pershy was using those words, and he used to listen to country music, I said, if country music was playing and he heard Uncle Pershy, Using those words, it would turn out the country was this number pressure because it was so melodic. <laughs> so I don't know what was the, the, the attraction to those words, but lucky, love those words. Yes. So, children are to be disciplined. And all of my elder cousins, George and Jerry, all you guys, Len, all you know that. Thank God for the time I was born. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because. When I, was, when I was talking to Georgie, he reminded me of some occasions that he went one time, he and Jerry went to school, didn't come near here and put themselves together properly. And Uncle Pershing came and gave them some firm discipline in the Guava State. There was an occasion also, one of our dear departing cousin, Carmen Bates, she pulled an all food joke on Uncle Pershing and told him that armor called him. And I called to Georgie, she had to remain at large for a few days. <laughs> I think Charlie was the man who remained at large in most of at top yard. Because there was a special occasion where Georgie and Uncle Pressure had an interaction and it went like this, if I can put it together. Uncle Pressure said, two will can roll down one pen. And Georgie said to him, when the whole of one was closer. <laughs> and I tell you. Female relatives who used to 
attend school in Kingston. I think she was a bit privileged if I should say so. Said on the first she was traveling the truck with a lady. She was in the truck also. Going to the pub oh God, where that world famous rock is. He made a signal to sing us to the lady. And she saw what happened. And he said, girl, put your boss on. <laughs> I shall say no more. <laughs> but how the pressure was special. And the pressure, I think, gave him precious. Because he was that type of person. I don't know if any of you have ever seen like pictures of my uncles and so. These were men in those days who were well groomed, yes. well shaved up, sideburns. Don't talk about dress. Because that was it. Because they were they, they were they were in men, you know, should call them that. Yes. I come first was a man who loved shoes also. And Charlie told my man of Asian here, he bought a certain pair of shoes one night to attend a dance down by school. Look at me, one of the first came in and wanted to wear the same pair of shoes. So, somebody had to jump on the bike, fast, fast, reach down to school, get the pair of shoes, and come back in time to come to get the shoes back and finish it. But, the man was special. And, and, I, and I love my uncle because yeah. he, he, I, I saw him and I looked up to him, and he was somebody I admired. So, Uncle Percy was a man in terms of being disciplined, certainly, yeah. because he wanted to tell you, say, he might pick up in the same thing. And like you hear in Ambar, she will say, no, he is at the bar, but he's outside, making sure no children come across that, fence, that line. So, you're back in the air. But there was an occasion where a certain young man from the school to now resides in England, asked him for a cigarette one morning. And Uncle Percy gave him a cigarette. But the young man was bright enough to ask Uncle Percy for a light. <laughs> and Uncle Percy took out the pack of cigarettes with the remaining. No, so, and he sorry. gave everything to him and said, He might pick up in the same thing. And that was how he quit smoking. So, the gentleman is Harry Cox. He was a Muslim Harry Cox. Yes. Uncle Percy was a man like he said a few words. But his few words were telling because he was smoking parables. And now this person, Mom, I love you. Now pull it. There was another one here also said to now put no razor when I'm here, no go. So, whatever that means, you must know. But, Uncle was an hero to us. Yes, he was an hero. And this guy was it. He kept the family together. And I think probably we need more of that right now, people to start out. Try and keep the families together because we might stretch out the class of economic situation and all of that. But you should still have that spirit within us to say, keep the thing going. As far as unity is strength. So I would always say, Uncle was that type of person. So on behalf of all of us at these and Angels, I just want to close by saying, when you say to Uncle Percy, say, Uncle, so and so, you say, go like this and say, Boom is the word. <laughs> Mr. Victor Williams, friend, after which Mr. McLaren. Well, I am not Victor Williams. <laughs> I am here to come for Pershing. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rod. I was asked by Nadia to read a tribute from Victor Williams. Honestly, I don't know the person, Victor Williams, but I wanted to say something on behalf of my uncle, so I took the opportunity just to represent my grandmother and more was the, the, the mere chair, and of course Uncle Preshi, the mere presence, we would call him the mere chair. As he had said, he is happy that he was born at a certain time. <laughs> Probably when Uncle Preshi was at a cooling down. Man like Ringo. Jerry, Uncle Percy for her son, Jaji, my bigger brother, Mikey. They were bigger than us, so good thing, you know, they can take the heat and, you know, we, <laughs> I get, you know, when well, my boy, the one who cool down. Jerry, Uncle Percy, Uncle Percy for her son, that better than Jerry, 
Bye. You say bad Jerry, bad. We just say wicked for Jerry Cruel. Because I know why. Jazzy was the kind of cheeky one. So Jerry and Jazzy, them face the fire for me. You know that they come and I come up behind them. But in growing up, you know, with my uncle, that man, show him up a lot. And if he was the type of person he is, you know, God knows what that would turn out to be, because he really keep with night. And with that, you know, we give thanks. As Ian said, you know, the man was a man where when he was the worst, I mean, the man is dressed him up in a Jamaican fabric and everything. And, you know, we have to attest to that. The other day, after he died, I went to visit Antonia. And his last caregiver, Arjun, Auntie Prim's son, we have a girlfriend, woman, or a brother, or a sister. I'm the last year, you know. And we're here, so I should, you know, share some memories. And I was at a certain amount of certain things and certain things, and this one, I said, no, I don't have the one part, I'm not a part of it. It's true, you know. And as a boy, I grew up from my own group. Boy, I'm telling you, I said, we look for the man as a giant. You know, and me I always stay around him. Then what we going to do run and come back, we had this, you know, close to him and then the last years I'm a person like in the last days, you know, I heard him been asking for me constantly. And who I'm going to call my uncle. I didn't want to see him so so true that you know, because I stay away car the memory start off here that you know me as but physically and mentally, you know, he couldn't get up by himself and do the things about him putting more that firm conversation and he broke me out, you know, bring tears to see my uncle like that. So Honestly, we saw that stay away about three times seen the last two weeks until the years have passed. Last time we visited him, we said to Nali, I said, Boy, I'm going to pray for you. This thing I'm going to fight that coming up. And, you know, so said, so done. But the suffering, the suffering you know, was here the last part because he lost his faculties and him everything. So, why are you rough? He said, But every time God, I don't want to answer you, man. You know, like, see, so, you know, yeah, man. I look up at my uncle as a giant, and you know, he would wait me go bigger than him and we go check him and meet him, embrace him. You know, we couldn't find myself here, bend up, and look up at my uncle, so we had to find him, so he was the one saying that I get bigger than him, you know. But I saw him and said, Uncle, rest with me, uncle. Bless. Okay. <laughs> Sisters and everybody together. Good afternoon. I don't think I have much to say with that one. I had to say that was laugh because everything that you said already I was about to say them. So I don't have much to say again, but we have to maybe stay in your mind that these things are true. But first of all, I want to take out two words from a song from Miss. Tell my Nelson and a word from Ho of Guy's Hill of the Kai. Everybody know Ho, yes. right? Yes. Special and Miss Telma's word song is too much to lose, too much to gain, to lose. And when you have like a problem, Ho would say, No fret, man, no fret. God to me, our father, father to me. So that means God will take care of everything. Back to Uncle Preshi, because I never know his name before till today. Uncle Uncle Preshi, I know him as. But as the uh, two speakers spoke about the truck business, they can't talk about truck business like me and Uncle Preshi. <laughs> because in those days, truck was truck. Truck lined up on Dudley Riley, Hills, and everybody had truck. And we were good truck men. That that works at one, key and banana, everything. But you know, St. Pierre can have a shop now, people get too lazy and they take them dead so we don't have much shop business again. But there was a joke, not a joke, a serious thing. I myself and Prashi used to exchange trucks. In when his truck break down, he could come and get my truck. If my truck break down, I would get his truck. And when no truck broke down, we could get anybody's truck. <laughs> right. So, but one day special. There was my truck, I was driving, 
Brown, you all go and tell me your truck, Lila and Fargo. Pretty truck and fresh. He always have his market people. So his week was to go for market. So coming from market, from Kingston, oh, boy, but in the truck, man, you know, the market sound, they were singing and drill and jump up. Market, good man. So they came to one of our customers. Somebody that know me well, and they was to do something for me. So when I come out of my truck, and go to the person, the person, and the person, what about my thing? And the person gave me an insulting, dirty word answer. I'm pressure here. I'm pressure come out of the truck, man. I said, Father, man, if I have to pay me, I would have to tell him about the Jamaica language. <laughs> you know? And it's a, come on, yeah, man. Because I know what? A human man, I talk to some. A human man, I talk to some. He said, all right, now we're going to go. I will draw back. And that memory never leaves me because it stood up with me. For me, and we stood up with each other all the while. And as other speaker said, Pressure was a kind of man that was always willing to help, willing to give good advice. And as you say, it was no church man. But there is a thing that went, why not with somebody? So no stay too long. Come, you know, I want to say again, everything said already. You know? But there's a thing that says, Love, I, I, uh, recently, I was telling some people up by the, the supermarket up, uh, but up, nice teachers and they get up and I said, Father, man, this way, this alarm. Because I just come back from to catch this, this funeral. My schedule was to clear chair today on the plane by 12 o'clock. I said, why miss that, 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 that funeral? Man, I saw that. I don't know about that. It was up, it was up the last night, party, everybody in the last party. So, Wednesday, the <laughs> twelve in common said he thinks fit to the thirteenth, you know. That we pack the soup because already everybody away your soup here. Yeah. And I said, boy, so that we have now the time you have to hand you there again and bring it on. You see you tell me you always overlook your soup yet, Mr. Bell left where we live because I may have to catch you something around. You can't let me because we have come from far back. Anyway. The change coming and we were right on time. We landed Wednesday and that today. And that was a blessing. But what I want to leave with us and tell all these people, those programs you have, and what is most time for the funeral services, they left the, the, the program, they left the church or dash them outside. No, don't do it because it costs money. Don't throw the people in the program if you don't want it, don't take it. Because this money is thrown away and lose the value of the programs and the value of the church and the value of the word that the minister brings out. I don't want to touch on him too much, but I'm going to close up. No, as I said, don't say that. Just two words, two, 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 a verse of a well known hymn that everybody wants to know. What a friend we have in Jesus. We just stand, everybody sing one verse, everybody close it. This is my story, this is my song. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit Make sure your heart is right so you can get to love you more. Jesus loves me, this I know. I think a four year old boy was sick and blind coming down. It's an afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. You see me sitting? These old feet here that are the wrong mess is having the better of me. And if you notice me, I'm not seen so properly out of that. I'm holding on. I'm hanging on in there. But all these fucking mass goes to me. Because I'm down here, you know, far down here. 
That's the Lord. Amen. But I'm also here. And I am here. Praise God. Mm.
I didn't really have to come again. It's just because of my uncle, who is Precious' best friend. I don't know anybody can come between those two and the rest of my uncles, my father and the rest of us. I have known this man all of my life. And he is a wonderful person. I knew him and grew up. And it keeps me remembering that it takes a village to grow a child. Amen. Yes. He was so close to the family. I saw him almost every day back in the days. And every time he was with my father, my uncles, and my aunt. You have heard and known that he is a community person. I can remember... When you talk about community person, I remember the funerals. Those caskets that were beautifully carved out of wood coming from the district. I tell you, Andrew, um, one time we had some trees cut and the lumber was cut and they were put on under the cellar to cure. And something happened and my mom said, Barry, don't we have some wood under the cellar? some board and him said yes but when he took out the board it was just a few pieces because anytime somebody died nobody now have no time to run washer they would just come and this friend and that friend and they take out a piece so there was almost no board left to use and pressure at the team and he would make the casket he would look after the Grave, and I tell you, one time we went to a funeral. Some one of his, their friend died in Ochrius, and when he completed, when they, 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 the vault was to be done, he put the material, and it was the exact amount of material, and those people were so overwhelmed they couldn't believe it. They said, these people, man, where did they come from and that topped the funeral? Because it, they didn't have to put a little water, they didn't have to sprinkle a little cement. It was smoothly done and they were so excited. These are the men that we have in and around Jeffrey Town. So he was a community person. And I said, I'm not going over. I can't forget the comma truck. <laughs> yeah, man, I remember that name over and over. Why? Because we have... Some of our relatives, after my uncles migrated abroad, the children went after. And you know, that was the truck that took us to the airport. Yes, and we all would go, and we ball go, and we ball come back. And we go for waving gallery that we don't have now. And we wave, and we ball, and we eat, and we fool with belly. For you know, each time they come in, they must stop here and stop there. And we had our goodies. I tell you, when we were sent out as children, if I go to Gail or, or going out and I come back to Gail or Ocherius or Geisel and then I would see Uncle Prashi and we would go home and say, and he would say, Barry girl, because that's how we style it. He's where you're going now, where you're coming from, we tell him, hey, we're not, re we're not ready yet because he's a, a bar nearby. And he buy the soda and the little nick snap biscuit and he says, stay right here as we're ready. So we sit down in the car and when we were finished, our tummy was filled, you know, and we'd go home. He would take us safely home. So he took care of us. Yes, and we can't forget that. And he didn't do it to us alone. We know he did it to many other people in the community. It was a community person, and whatsoever he had was community things. So I tell you, um, I saw mm, last night that guy. And I said, and it's a man. If we get to the truck, I can't make a airport. And Arthur is here and Paul is here. That truck carried the whole of them guy airport. And when my uncles were coming back, they didn't. They didn't come in small parcels. 17 and so, so uncles and friends. And they would come and when they come, they hurry. And it's a surprise. So they drop out the things 
and then they said soon come and they would go to that van and they would pick up on pressure on go with with the tarshas, everybody and sometime in the week one two o'clock at night they wake up on the side of the road for corn poor and they cook and they have a ball until they like those people live good and we wish we could have done some of those quality i will never forget the the commercial the family we were so close and we continue to be close until death. Yes, it's a lovely family. And Uncle Pressure was a lovely person. Using his colorful words in such beautiful ways sometimes. We couldn't repeat them, but we can always remember them. Uncle Pressure, may your soul rest in peace and life. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. God be weary. We are coming down. I just do the last song after the other person will be Brother Malcolm. After that, we'll be hearing from the preacher. Amen. They split how riding. They say it's leaving. To a place where we never die.
one of the family. And the family is my family. Whether it's extreme, nuclear, or whatever, it's my family. So one love to the world family. Hallelujah. I, 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 I will complete. So forgive me. So I decided that I'm not going to sing a sad song, a sad song for on the person. Never tell me the reason why. I hear somebody say a while ago. He said those colorful words in so beautiful ways. <laughs> That's no lie. So I realized something um, when he was coming down and I, and I, I really admire Uncle Bushy for doing that. He found Christ. A lot of people don't understand that. And the greatest thing was that when you know that it's one someone that points a child and then you know the time will be coming. So for me, it's a bittersweet moment. I can't do love, but I can't do cry. Because it will live. But for us that is here to make this song, I want you to just listen to this song. And if you can get up over your seat and jump up, just jump up, just do what you want to do. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ah, amen. Sing grace
Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless God. I greet you well this afternoon in the care of the Holy Ghost. Amen. To the bereaved family, especially to Lady Archer. Swanna. Yes, sir. And up Sister Arch. We got the God Yeah, she's right here. Yeah. 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 So everybody will have to see our tears. Amen. Bless God. So I greet you well. And we pray your strength, of course, in this time. This is an iron shot and iron, so we will stand with each other, of course, in such a time as this. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And uh, of course, we know it's not easy. It's never something that we can put in to understanding in the prescription and feel and say, all right, we're going to overcome this one this way. No, it's a process. Yes. So together we walk, together we talk. Amen. Together. We wash one another feet. Right. Amen. Before I go much further, of course, I told my own experience with Uncle Peter. Oh, yeah, man. But those of you know Uncle P, somebody say, I have to go to the religious, but in our favorite song. Amen. Yeah, man. So I'm going to try to get a prayer and a course of this song before we get into the message. And it's, of course, in your. Some sheep I must have to say to me. For I be at work alone. Yes. And Mr. Rock said earlier that, you know, at some time when we were able to have a clear conversation. But in spite of that, able to have a clear conversation. When it comes down to talking to him about God, the last time I said, I don't know really bored, but you know. What do you mean, man? They don't know what's up, God. We think of anything I want, we think of anything I come out. We think of anything I want, we think of anything here. Yeah, so, when it comes down to it's got a force that part of him still works. So, he told me this song, I must have to say, and I'm going to ask you to stand with me, of course, the food of water is sleep. We're walking here much longer, I can say that much. This is not a place for my content, your message. So, I'm going to give this platform to do so. And I greet all other ministers of us in the house, for the in the pure or and the love strong. Bless the name of Jesus. I greet you and all leaders in your respectful office. Bless the name of Jesus. So, of course, I'm not the best of singing words. With your help, we're going to do it. I must have the same Enter into the 
kingdom of heaven. And we know clearly that we will have a personal people today who think that they are so righteous and they are what we call self-righteous. But except your righteousness get beyond the that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you ain't going nowhere. Praise the name of Jesus. So that the first scripture that I use, but I will be coming to you from the book of Luke chapter 18. Praise the name of Jesus from verse 9. And he spake a parable unto certain with trust in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. He spake a parable to who? Those who trust in themselves and think that they are righteous and what despise others. Two men went into the temple to pray to one of Pharisees and the other a public and in the name of Jesus. The Pharisees stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men or exalters. Bless the name of Jesus. And just adulterers or even this publican. So clearly, as the Lord, I am happy that I am righteous. I am in right standing. I am not like them. And even today, there are some people in church who classify themselves so righteous that they are not like them. That's the name of Jesus. But the word of God in Matthew chapter 5 verse 20 says, Accept your righteousness. Exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. You are going nowhere. Amen, church of God. That's the name of Jesus. So he said, I'm happy that I am not like then, the Pharisees took praying, exalted himself, but in the 13th verse, with the name of Jesus, he's in the same to in the 11th verse, he said, or even the publican, he said, I pass twice a week, and I give all, I give my tithes up, I go to fast in twice a week. Let's let the man to close, bro. And I take out the tithes of all my position and I give it. Yes, so I'm saying to you, Lord, I am more righteous than them. Yes. And there are some people today, because of your position, you think that is the same position you have on earth, you are in heaven. But I'm saying to you, except your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. Do what you can say, Ashat and you can run behind, and you can dress well, you ain't going nowhere, except your righteousness of death, Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In verse 13, the publican standing on four rock will not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, Saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. So while one was boasting in prayer, one was saying, mercy, we wrote my life. We are only here today, we are only who we are today because of the mercy of God. It's not because you are so righteous, it's not because of your good deeds, but it's because of the mercy of God. And even in church, sometimes I find some people, they will skin up their face after some people because they think that they are so righteous. I mean, and they know to do the Christian dream, and you don't know it like them. And they put you in a category, you can't worship beside them because guess what? You are not in your church category. But I'm saying to you today, accept the righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees. You shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. So of course, righteousness is a requirement to enter. Christ said, I accept, you shall not enter without you reach to a certain level. That's the name of Jesus. That's the name of Jesus. The righteousness of the scribes and of the scribes and Pharisees were based on freedom. That's the name of Jesus. Freedom and bull. And to say that we are not 
entanglement in a form of gross crime. With the name of Jesus, I will check the law. We do according to what the law says. With the name of Jesus. With the name of Jesus. But the sin and the public can just put him on an interest and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Sometimes tomorrow we pray as if we are giving God words. And yet, never take the time out to humble yourself and ask for mercy. Amen. With the name of Jesus. When I pray, I'm going to give God information. I just want him to carry it with me. Yes. I'm not here to carry it with him. He already knows the information with it. But guess what? We have to let him know still that my faith looks up to thee. The Lamb of Calvary. Savior divine. Hear me! Now as I pray, as I plead to you. You are my only source. The dog should have drawn thyself from me to wither or to whom I shall go. But the name of Jesus, in the closing verse, said, I tell you this. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be a peace. And he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Tell somebody, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Righteousness is not something to God and to God about because there is none that can declare himself to be righteous. See one Christ Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. I hear you quote it earlier. It's not by works that any man should quote, but it's a gift of God. Bless the name of Jesus. Unless we can find ourselves in a position where we can be clothed with the righteousness of God, your tongues can't carry you to heaven. If tongues come to you to heaven and say, Lord, I will be exposed up here. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. But it's beyond that. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let's keep down to verse 18. Because I'm wrapping up this quick. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why? God is thou be good. No one is good save one that is God. Amen. Don't know the commandment. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And yet you are replying now. And he said, All of these I have kept from my youth up. I have already master your lead. Scam me already about everything that is required of me. I have kept all of this from my youth. But I'm saying to you, in spite of things you have been doing well, you're still not something. Amen. Amen. In spite of things that you're doing so well, you are still lacking something. Yes. Except when you think that you're done, you're poor. Amen. So this young man after Jesus telling him all that he needs to do. Don't commit that out. You don't be a false witness. The man said Jesus and said, Jesus, guess what? You're late. Because all of you are now saying, I have been keeping this from my youth. That's the name of Jesus. So I don't need to go into years. In verse 22. No, I'm Jesus. Heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lockest thou one thing. Yet lockest thou one thing. Now, you mean that you have been doing so in church? You sing and be quiet, you mean praise and worship. You throw your tithes and present a prayer meeting. That's the day for us. And the master says, You have something. You're going to be given the end of some questions, the master. We are our dog. Some people say, I want to question God. But if you ask me much time, I need to get going. Amen. We're not going to appoint the time to question him. Okay, I don't bother me, I can't question him and talk to him. Even the man who presents Jesus, John the Baptist, he said, Behold the Lamb of God which take it away the sins of the world. I am just a forerunner. I am not the light. I just come to be a witness of the light. Here is it. He presented Jesus to the people. And when John the Baptist was in the prison, John said, Hey, I ask you, my Holy Christ, 
and I should go and look for an answer. So when trouble take you some time, you might have a question that we are at home. And we have some people, of course, right now, you might be asking God in your situation, we are at home. I've been praying, I've been fasting, but I'm still wondering, we are at home. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Christ come to give life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. If you want to get there, I'm saying to all of us today, your righteousness never begins. Where are you? It's not today. Hey boy, come here. They give you love that give them inheritance that they describe it. That's why we are going to call it. It's only the grace of God. Check it out. It's only the grace of God that us to turn our lives. It's not because I have been in church and who. Maybe we are grown with his righteousness. God, guess what? As I said earlier, your righteousness can't take you there. But I thank God for one called Jesus. And when Christ came and paid the price, when Father looked down at me and not seen me, because when you look at you and see you for you, you couldn't get there. But when you look at you, you can see Son Jesus standing representing for you and say, I am paying it all. Hard to him. It's a sin at the left a crimson play, but guess what? He washes white as snow. Jesus will take us into heaven. Now, Daddy always said 
Minna make no wrongs with her this already, but me a fool the wicked. Today we are here because he has lost the wicked, and that was said before. But you notice in all of what was said, it was not a loss, it was a great, great gain because he left these wonderful memories for all of us, community, friends and family alive. Ladies and gentlemen, family, relatives and friends, we are gathered here today to honor and remember the life of a remarkable man, a loving father, and a true pillar of strength who has touched us all deeply. As we reflect on the memories and the moments that defined Wilbert Lloyd Archer's journey, we are reminded of the remarkable person he was and the indelible impact he had on our lives. He was never a man of many words, and we all heard that before, but expressed his love through his actions. He was a beacon of wisdom, his guidance shaping our lives with grace and humility. He possessed an unparalleled ability to light up any room with his stories decorated already you know how. <laughs> his presence brought comfort to those around him and his wisdom was a source of solace in times of uncertainty. Now during his time here with us, we all have come, across, come to know him as a multifarious Sorry, in an, a multi-pairs of roles. That is, like husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, great-granduncle, friend, associate, and mentor. And I am privileged to know him as dad. It is within the context, or within this context, that I will speak and share the greatness of this man. And I speak for Nalio, and I'm sure for Pierre and all the others. Dad was a man mm -hmm. of many names. Some of them we, we named already. And some, or possibly most of you, may know him as Uncle Freshy or as Reverend Richard Soda. Freshy, yeah. Mars Freshy, Uncle P, Freshy, Wilbert, yeah. and Cass. You know, I don't know the cat thing. That one. Yeah. Okay. Now, you may be wondering how he got the name oh, Cat. Let me share the story with you. Years ago, he was inside a bar bending his elbow. This was his way of saying he was drinking. And um, while drinking his rum, a cat came along, purring and would not leave him alone. He ushered the cat away several times, but the cat would always come back. Fed up and not knowing what to do, he said to the cat, um, run you run, no, run you on, run your way and get. And he picked up the cat, opened its mouth, and drenched it with the rum. He said that when he let go of the cat, he put him, he put him hand, oh, he put him hand in a him foot and take off. That's a cat. <laughs> and take off through the bush like a plane. And that was the last time he ever saw him. So that is how he got the name cat. Now, Wilbert was born, and some of this you heard before, in the district of, of Tyndall, located in the parish of St. Anne, and he was the seventh of Jeremiah and Elmore Archer's nine children, which consisted of six boys and three girls. 
Being the boy, last boy, you know, Barry was the baby girl and he was the baby boy. You know? Yeah, yeah. He had a great time living in Jeffrey Town because the family had relocated from Tyndall to Jeffrey Town. And with his siblings. And allow me to let you take, no, allow me to give you a tale. Back then, they used to have. <laughs> I remember this one. How did I tell me? <laughs> Back then, they used to have wet sugar instead of dry sugar. And that was kept in a container. You know, the wet can. Daddy decided to experiment by putting the entire container of sugar into the water to make a mixture of sugar, you know, sugar and water, right? For him and the dogs. When his parents came home, they found Wilbert and the dogs passed out, drunk from the sugar mixture. And of course, he did not receive a beating because he was spoiled. I did hear a little bit of a different twist on that sugar story. In the tea pot, the sugar out of the sugar pan. And Noel did see him. And he tell Noel, said, if she talk or he talk, you must go split him down. <laughs> Not sure of that? <laughs> Daddy had a special love for animals. He always said that he would rather give his dinner to the dog and do it out so that the dog would have something to eat. Okay. All right. Okay, Wilbert's formative years were spent at the Jeffrey Town Old Age School, which you heard before. And he had a reputation for being a very serious youngster who hated to play from an early age. It seems strange, but what kid doesn't enjoy playing? Allow me to tell you again another tale. A group of students and teacher folks, a lot of us in here didn't know teacher folks, were playing a game of cricket one day at school. Despite teacher folks' best effort to persuade daddy to participate in the game, he refused to do so. Wilbert was eventually coerced into playing the game by teacher Forbes after repeated attempts. The first ball that was bowled hit him in his shank and immediately he threw away the bat and said, Same. <laughs> Same. That's why me no one played, you know. I don't think that up to this day, teacher Forbes has ever gotten over Wilbert's reaction. May his soul rest in peace. Or may his soul rest in peace. Wilbert fell in love with drawing while pursuing his education at Jefferson all age. And this enthusiasm ultimately motivated him to seek a profession as a contractor. After graduating from all age school, worked alongside his brother Desmond, my father, to construct several buildings, including, as you heard before, homes, schools, retaining walls, and bridges all across Jamaica. Later in life, he moved from Jeffrey Town to Spanish Town to pursue his interests. He spent many years working in Kingston after leaving Spanish Town. In 1958, he returned to Jeffrey Town. Upon his return from Kingston, he began working as a truck driver, traveling the entire length and breadth of Jamaica while transporting both people and goods. He was a diligent and hard worker. He would always find his breakfast and lunch prepared and packed for work by his younger sister, Aunt Vi. 
Here you say imps. What? Them days them did have carrier and would have the things all geared up, no? And this down here, so them get the best. Them boy used to get the best of the parts of the chicken and the one with you. And then you would have the thing layered in um, a carrier. You remember that? And Cyrus would give it one You're not hearing, I'm sorry. I must have stepped away from the mic. I'm sorry. Soon after, he met an elegant lady named Enid, and their relationship produced two handsome boys. And <laughs> they're here today. Arthur and Dave. Later on, he met fabulous Faye, and they had a beautiful baby girl named Colette. Who is now deceased? Um, rest in pieces. After that, he met gorgeous Gloria and had two more handsome sons, Wayne and Craig. Maybe they have a little more that anyway. Maybe tell Sonia about this story. And we walk past him and we arm the back step and things that all was great and he pulled the beating something out of his pocket and being like a man who was beating me get me into so nervous <laughs> 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 and the sisters oh, I'm sorry so he had um Berman Craig uh, Craig Wayne and Craig in his exploration, he also met his darling, Dorrit, and had a lovely daughter named Jackie. You know Jackie, right? <laughs> Not sure, oops, oops, Not sure if there are any other brothers and sisters, because it seems as if the tailor did not put a zipper. <laughs> Joan Rose, a stunning young woman in 1978. They decided to get married after a period of courtship. He never thinks that you're married to her because so did their tone at one time or another. And then we think that she signed other people and she was getting old. Me, you know that the story. However, no one genuinely thought they would get married because many people knew Wilbur was not the kind to settle down. So when they announced their intentions, everyone was startled. Unexpectedly, in, uh, sorry, in 1981, this was in 1981, right? Unexpectedly, oh, they were in 1980, and their union gave birth my beautiful cousin, Malia, in 1981. In 1989, the couple welcomed the handsome son, Peter. Oh. Peter Anthony, yes. Who would be their second child? In their house in Jeffrey Town, Wilbert and Joan Archer and their children led a happy life. His dedication to his family and others was unwavering. As a father, he embraced his role with open arms and an open heart to everyone around him. And we all heard that through um, Reverend Brissett and others already. Um, I remember when I was going to high school, I would board, and I would board in Linston. And so sometimes my friends and I would visit for the weekend. This was all fun and dandy until I realized that the money that daddy was giving me for lunch was the same amount he was giving to my friends. And I was not having it. I was so upset 
that I never invite. I never invited them home again. Being a father and a provider was very important to him. So he made sure that everyone around him was taken care of. And in 2018, Wilbur, Wilbur developed a chronic disease, strengthening his relationship with God. Although Wilbur rarely attended church, he was frequently overheard calling on the Lord, reading a passage from the Bible, and praying whenever he could. I must have the Savior with me, was his favorite song, and I think we heard that before. He was a firm believer in the Almighty. These morals and values were instilled in him from a younger age because he and his siblings had to spend times every morning with their parents in fellowship and as we go to, to church room at Wallingford Baptist Church. We all have to. A few weeks ago, Daddy's health started deteriorating significantly. He was no longer able to pray or give praises out loud, but I know that he did religiously in his heart. Watching his health decline was very painful as he was not able to share his colorful words, tell stories, speak, or even eat. His only way of communicating was to squeeze my hand. He received the best care, love, and support as the days went on from his wife. His stability in my childhood and a source of strength for our family. As a child, I remember daddy would take home lots of goodies like peanuts, sausages, and sausagen after returning from the rum bar for Pierre and I. I was aware that my mother disapproved of his drinking but I was always excited for him to go since he usually brought back treats for me. <laughs> I cannot fathom the fact that you are gone. No more calling Najade or Najel, Najel, and hearing you answering. Oi, oi. And I would say, not you, Daddy. No more coming to check on you. Reasoning, feeling, bathing, or shaving you. No more jokes or colorful words when things didn't go your way. I will miss you, Daddy. And I will always hold on to the amazing memories we share together. As we bid farewell to Wilbert Archer, mm -hmm. let us remember not just the loss we feel, but the immense privilege of having shared a part of Wilbert's life journey. Let us carry forward the lessons he taught us to be kind, to be present, to chase our passions with fervor and to take the best care of ourselves. Though he may no longer walk among us, his spirit lives on in the stories we tell, the values we hold dear, and the love we continue to share in our grief. Let us find solace in the knowledge that Wilbert's legacy lives on in each of us as we carry forward the values he embodied we become a living testament to his spirit as we lay with bird out to rest let us celebrate his beautiful soul he was or the beautiful soul he was the lives he touched and the love he shared. May his memory forever 
be the source of comprehension for all of us, all, for us, for all of us in peace, dear Dan, in the question. Knowing that we love you and we will forever be, you will forever be etched in our hearts. Loneliness chips in. 
being here, we pray, Jesus. Father of heaven, we just want to thank you for everything this afternoon as we look to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord
Where are you going to from the earth? Just a moment.
Okay, I'm gonna fight that one. I'm gonna fight that one. I'm gonna fight that one.
Do you see your space in there between go ride in with it, man? Slide in, man. Yo, boy, boy, boy. Well done, no? This ready for going now? Yeah. Who's ready to go? Say, pass, I'm coming to you. 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 Okay, so them can't do them. No, man, I'm coming to you. So Reverend, so you want the outside of the committee or you want to go in? Oi, put it on my brother, pass up the committee No, catch it, no, catch it, no, catch it up Catch it up Next side, you want to go in? You don't have black corner next side Pay push in, Reverend, I'll let it chill Yeah Put down your seat, sir It's like going to kill me Yeah All right Love one And that please Almighty God and his wife problem to take out of the world the soul of our deceased brother Archer. We'll be therefore coming to his body to the earth. The flowers are what you can join as earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Our undertaker, you may proceed. We will be using the program sheet first that the family provides. After we finish with the selection from the program, then we take open the selection. But the honor what the family provides first, then open selection. And the side that says graveside, there's a land beyond, that there's a land that is fairer than the first song. And our... Now come close to the other side. Put your hand on the wall. 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 Yeah. 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 Right up on the wall, I'm up on the wall. Two minutes now. Watch it, watch it. But you're for the wall. You're for the wall. So far, so good. So far, so good. You must say, you're right. 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 You're right.
here.
You are. 